Hi everyone. So yesterday I actually did a video on this question here, this question one from the Edexcel 2018 um, paper one A level exam. Um, so this question was on small angle approximations, uh, and we uh, basically show that this one minus cos four theta over two theta times sine three theta was approximately equal to four over three for small angles of theta. Um, something I mentioned, I mentioned that I was going to um, link a proof or my proofs, how you prove these small angle approximations. So these, um, let me get my pen tool to work. Um, oh no, it won't work. Um, but yeah, if you, if you see um, these approximations here, so the sine theta approximately theta, cos theta approximately one minus theta squared over two and tan theta approximately theta. Um, I said I was going to link proofs of those, but I actually haven't proved, haven't actually got any videos or approved those results. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm actually going to prove these three small angle approximation results. But before we get into today's video, please do make sure you do click like and click subscribe. Click that like button, click subscribe. It really helps me out and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything and it takes you less than a second. So please do click those buttons and we'll get into today's video now. So, yeah, we're going to prove these three results um, today. So the way we prove these results with small values of theta. And again, I put small in quotation marks because... Um, yeah, in A-level maths, there's no real proper definition of what it means to be a small angle. Um, we just want a small, relatively small angle close to zero in radians. We're measuring the angles in radians because that's what we do uh, mostly in A-level maths. Um, OK, so the way we do this proof is that we kind of draw like a sector of a circle like this. We've got this sector of this circle um, and we've got an angle there. Of theta, and what we're going to do is just make this into a, a right angle triangle there, like this. So we've got a sector of a circle with a center O there. I'll just call the center there O. Um, and this is this kind of um, I'll do the arc in red actually. This arc there, uh, this is an arc part of the circumference of the circle. Uh, so we can see that this radius there, well, this distance from O to there, I'll call this A, call that capital A. And I call this point down there B. So we've got an arc length A to B, and we've got a radius O to A, which is R. And also this uh, th this is the same as uh, O to B. So that's also the radius of the circle as well. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this small little bit down here. So I'll call this, um, uh, well, I'll just leave that blank, actually. I'll just call this distance there. Um, I call that x. So that's going to be x there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this kind of height going from a to this point there. Actually, I will give this point a name. I'll call it c. Let's just call it c. So this a to c height, uh, perpendicular height, I'll call this h. OK, so we've got a right angle triangle, essentially, uh, with h there. Uh, this distance on the bottom, so that's the right angle there. Uh, so you've got a hypotenuse of R going from A, uh, sorry, O, A, and then C down there. This O to C distance is going to be R take away X. So we can see that from the diagram uh, that this distance going from O to C is going to be R minus X. So I'll do this again in blue. Uh, so this is R. Sorry, that's the wrong color blue. Uh, this distance here is R minus X. So you've got this right angle triangle there. So let's look at this right angle triangle and let's come up with some facts, some kind of like trigonometric facts. So we know that sine theta, and this is theta there, so I forgot to label the theta there. Um, so sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we look at the theta there, what is opposite the theta in this right angle triangle? Well, it's H. And what is the hypotenuse? Well, it's going to be R. So we know, I mean, if we times both sides by R, we know that R sine theta is going to be equal to H. So we, we know that. OK, so then uh, we can also do actually the same calculation with tan if we look at this blue right angle triangle. Uh, so again, I'll do this over here. So what else do we know? So we know that tan theta, so tan is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of this theta is H and adjacent to the theta is this R minus X. Um, OK, so we've got that. We've got uh, tan theta is equal to H over R minus X. I'll just make the 
the line there. So let me do that again. Uh, just make the fraction line a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so we've got a small angle theta. Uh, so theta is basically as close to zero as physically possible. So um, if, let's just make a note of this. So if theta is small, then really what we want is we want theta to go to zero. We want theta to tend to zero. Uh, so we want theta to tend to zero. So to go as close as possible to zero as we can get. Um, okay, so just by looking at this diagram, this um, this original diagram there, um, if theta gets closer and closer to zero, um, as hopefully you can see, if this angle is getting smaller, and smaller and smaller then what's going to happen is that this x here this kind of little x there is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because the radius of the the uh the circle is eventually gonna almost touch the bead there if you can kind of see what i'm trying to do on the diagram there i'm actually just gonna do what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do uh, a neater diagram just to kind of illustrate what's going on here um so again we've got our sector like this uh, with our right angle there but if we keep on drawing smaller and smaller angles so now um as you can see if we get that if we make the angle the theta is smaller and smaller uh, smaller and smaller and smaller uh the x the distance between this c there and the b there is getting smaller and smaller and smaller so let's just make a note of this so when theta tends to zero that means that x tends to zero, this x gap tends to zero. So therefore, let's just make a note of this. So therefore, when theta tends to zero, what that means is that um, this tan theta, which is equal to h over r take away x, is actually going to tend to h over r. So let's make a note of this. So that means that tan theta tends to h over r um and again let's just let's just be clear why that is so when theta goes to zero we know that x goes to zero so if x goes to zero when theta goes to zero so when theta really small then if we look at our formula for tan this x there is going to get close to zero so this h over r minus x gets closer to h over r because the x goes to zero so that's the reasoning for that uh, what I'm going to do now then is just go to a go to a whiteboard to get some more space. Um, so we'll go to the whiteboard. So what we've got then, so when theta is small, so when theta goes to zero, we've got that tan theta is approximately uh, what we had before, which was this, um, if we go back to the diagram again, uh, so h over r as we write down down here h over r so it's approximately h over r so tan theta is approximately h over r and sine theta we know so sine theta is approximate well it's exactly equal to again if we go back to the diagram uh sine theta is exactly equal to h over r so exactly equal to h over r so what we can say then is that when theta is small so when theta is small we can see that sine theta is approximately tan theta that's what we can tell from that um now how do we actually get the result that we want uh so the, the result that we wanted we just go back to the uh writing here so the result we want is that sine theta is approximately theta and tan theta as well is approximately theta that's what we're trying to get towards so how do we do that? So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a new diagram for this again. So let's draw a new diagram, the same diagram we had before with our arc here, uh, our sector looking like this, our small angle theta, our radius there, um, our little x distance there, um, and this r minus x going from c there to o there with that being a and that being b and we've got a height h uh perpendicular height perpendicular to the base of that uh sector okay so 
we know and we can see again from the diagram that when h gets closer and closer and closer uh, to zero that this height going from a to c this h is virtually going to be the same as this arc length a to b uh, that's kind of the idea so when um when you make this theta smaller and smaller so again if i try and draw this in red for example it's going to make theta a smaller angle so that's now a smaller theta what we can see is that if we try and just draw down h there so that's going to be our new capital h and that uh, i'll do this in pink so this new arc there is going to be our new arc we can see that virtually h is basically the arc length so let's just make a note of this uh so also so also when uh so when theta tends to zero we can see that the arc length uh so the arc length is approximately the same as the height so how do we calculate the arc length of a sector so if we're dealing with radians it's quite uh straightforward it's a very straightforward formula so arc length in radians is equal to r times theta um, so the proof of that um, just follows from the arc length in degrees so the arc length in degrees is the angle over 360 times by uh, 2 pi r which is the circumference of a circle um, when you deal with radians 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi radians so what will happen is that the two and the pi will cancel out and you just get r times theta the angle uh, in radians so the arc length so therefore the arc length is going to be r times by theta and that's going to be approximately h when theta is a very small angle okay so what we can say there for them uh so let's just um let's just move everything up a little bit so we can fit this all in so we know uh using this information up here is we know that sine theta is equal to h over r, but that's going to be approximately the same as r theta over h. Sorry, uh, over, oh, sorry, my bad. Over r when uh, theta goes to zero. So what that means is that the uh, the r and the r there will cancel out, and so sine theta is going to be approximately theta for small values of theta. Um, and also, <clears throat> we get the same result with tan as well, um, because we know again uh, from what we what we've shown there that sine theta is approximately tan theta. So again, this theta there is going to be approximately um, tan theta. So that's how we get our result um, our result for small angles for uh, sine and tan. But how about cos? How do we prove the result for cos? So I'll go to the next page for this. So uh, I'll just put like a subtitle approve uh, cos theta is about one minus theta squared over two for uh, small values of theta. So how do we now prove this result? So the idea to prove this result is we actually use a double angle formula for this result. So remember uh, our cos double angle formula, which is this one here, cos two theta. Um, and this is going to be if we use our formula book, uh, so this is the formula that you'll get in your formula book. And you'll also get a couple of others as well. You'll also get this one, 2 cos squared take away 1, and also 1 minus 2 sine squared. So we could use any one of these three formulas. I mean, they're all the same thing um, to get from this one to that one to that one. Um, you just use the identity sine squared plus cos squared equals one and you do some rearranging. That's kind of how you go from these, go between the three uh, results. So what we're going to do to prove our result is we're going to take the third option. We're going to take uh, this one here. That's the one we want to take. So we'll just write this down here. So we know that cos two theta is equal to one minus two sine squared theta. OK, so what I'm going to do now, so we want to try and prove the result that cos theta is approximately one minus theta squared over two. So what I'm going to do instead of having a theta, sorry, two theta as our angle, I'm going to change the angle to theta. So change 
uh, well, actually, what I'm going to say, instead of change to theta, I'm going to say half the angle here. So what we want to do now is half the angle. And what halving the angle will do is it will give us cos theta, because we want to get an approximation of cos theta. So I'm going to half the angle on the left-hand side. Now, if I half the angle on the left-hand side, I must do the same on the right-hand side. So we've got a theta there. So again, I've got to half that angle there. So I'm halving the argument of these trigonometric functions. So if you half the input of a function on one side, you must half the input of the function on the second, the other side. So that's what we're doing here. So cos theta is going to be equal to 1 minus sine, then 2, then sine squared, but we're halving the angle, so it's going to be theta over 2. OK, so we know that cos theta is exactly the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. Now, what we can say, I mean, let's just make this really explicit. So we know that cos theta is equal to 1 minus 2, and then this sine of theta over 2, and we're squaring that. That's what the notation there means. So now we know from before, so we know from the previous slide that when theta is small, uh, we know that sine theta is approximately theta. So that means that also, if theta is very small, then of course that means that theta over 2 is going to be very small. So theta over 2 is going to be the same as approximately theta over 2. Um, and that's because what this result here is telling us is that um, if you take sine of an angle, that's approximately the same as that angle if the angle is small. So if your new angle is theta over 2, and then you're going to plug that into the sine function, then sine of theta over 2 is going to be approximately theta over 2 when the theta is small. So let's just make a note of this down here, that when theta is small, what that means is that cos theta is going to be approximately 1 minus 2. And then inside this part here, sine theta over 2 is approximately theta over 2. So I'm going to put theta over 2 inside there, and then we're going to square it. So now it's just really a case of simplifying our, our results, of simplifying what we have. Um, sorry, let me try and uh, <laughs> figure out how to make this smaller. There we go. Um, so then it's just simplifying the result that we've got. So this is going to be equal to 1 minus 2. And then theta squared is theta squared. And then 2 squared is 4. So we get that. So we get 1 minus, then 2 over 4 is a half. So we get 1 minus theta squared over 2. And so therefore, cos theta is approximately 1 minus theta squared over 2 when theta is a small angle. So that's how we get that result. So that's how we get the cos result. And this is how we got the, the sine and the tan result by using a geometric argument. So any questions, do drop a comment. Um, but hopefully that was useful to go through how we prove um, geometrically and also algebraically uh, the sin, cos and tan uh, small angle approximations. If you are interested in having an online maths tutor uh, for either A-level maths or GCSE maths, please do email me because I am available to help out. So my email is drdifferentiation at gmail.com. Uh, so just drop me an email, just drop me some details about you, uh, whether you're doing A-level maths, GCSE maths, and if there's any specific areas of maths that you need help with. So drop me an email or get your parents to drop me an email, um, and then we can discuss um, everything about price, etc, etc. Um, so drop me an email and we can get sessions booked in.